So here we are at uh, Blessed Pier Giorgio Vasari or the family summer holiday home in Polone, which is near Biella, which is in Biella, which is up sort of north of Turin, up near the mountain top. So it's quite a bit colder up here, but just um, it's still sort of pretty much in its original sort of form of when he was here. So it's still pretty special. So I just want to show one sort of one sort of place, or share one sort of story that he used to do um, when he was a young bloke. When they used to come out here. He used to want to go to mass so much, and uh, the way the only way that he could get to mass on time was there was a mass up in the mountains, which is about 11 kilometres away from here, called Aropa, which we're sort of staying in as well. And the mass used to start at six o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. And the only way that he could make sure he was going to wake up in time was in the morning. He would tie tie a bit of string around his wrist when he went to sleep, and he'd let the string go outside of his bedroom window down to the ground. And his bedroom window is right up here, this one up here. So what he'd do was he'd let a bit of string come down onto the ground and then when the gardener would come in at about four o'clock in the morning, the gardener would pull on the bit of string and uh, it would obviously pull Pier Giorgio's wrist and he'd wake up in time and then the gardener would put a ladder up on his windowsill and he'd climb down in the morning, thank his gardener, and then he would run the 11 kilometers up the hill to Aropa, which is incredibly steep. We drove down there today. Drove, he'd run all the way up there in time to get to mass at six o'clock in the morning. After mass, he would run all the way back home, get back into his room before his parents had known he'd been out and get ready for school. So blessed be Giorgio, he loved the mass, he loved Jesus and the Eucharist so much, he would go to that sort of effort to go in the mornings. And he would do that most days being up here at his summer home in Polone. Absolutely inspirational. <laughs> I think uh, going to the place where he lived has made it all so much more real for me in terms of who he was and his existence. Um, I think uh, the, the fact that he ran from his house to, to Europa is pretty impressive when you see how far it took us to drive there, about half an hour. And he did that most mornings when he's up here, which is pretty incredible. Um, but also too, I think it's, it's interesting to see his family and um, I, you got a you got a feeling for how wealthy his family was, and um, the place in which he lived. And it's nice to see like his mother was a great artist as well, and just seeing the, the beautiful work that she did. For me personally, the the prayer, praying at the bed then when she died and it was a great experience for me, and and also um, having mass in that in that room as well. And I think being enough to pray for all my family and my friends and all the guys of Rosati and. Um, asking for his intercession to make Prasadi um, something special in Australia and um, help young men um, come to know Christ. For me going there I was very surprised at how big the, the house was. Um, I know he lived in a, in a mansion and you get there and it really is a mansion, it's a very big place and I gained a really big appreciation for the artwork of his of his mother Adelaide and seeing all the images and things that she painted and the diversity of it all. I was very impressed with her, her artwork but I found it really incredible that we were able to go to his house and to walk into his bedroom where he stayed and you can see like his, his hat there and his razor and he's got like the, his skis up against the wall still, he's got shoes there and you can just, I, I couldn't believe we could just walk in there and I found that very overwhelming and it was something I had to really sort of pre prepare for going in. I just felt like, I don't know, shouldn't there be I don't know, a rope or glass in front of this, this, holy, this holy place where he spent a lot of his time and I found that really, yeah, very... So I was surprised at the access we were able to have and, and you just walk into the room there's just 
relics all over the place. Um, and being able to celebrate Mass at the, next to the bed where he died and to be able to offer up the Mass there for my, um, for my family as well and, and the guys and part of Frasati Australia. And yeah, just made, you, made it very personal touch um, seeing the place where he's, where he grew up and oh, yeah, it's very, um, yeah, I, I think I'm still trying to come to terms being able to just have that sort of access to a, a holy life and a, the place where he, he grew up. So that was very special for me and um, yeah, being, the Mass was very, was the highlight, highlight for me. Yeah. The great saying, this is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. I think we've all been given something special something we all remember for the rest of our days. You younger guys particularly, um, the older you get, the more you look back on this day, the more you realise how touched we all were to be together as a group on this pilgrimage to experience what we did today. I won't go through it all, because the boys have done that, but I just want to say that it is very special it is one of the most special days of my life, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. It just occurred to me, listening to everybody speak around the table, that there was a huge difference in being in the house in Polone and being in his room and around his deathbed than the, what there was to being near his body <laughs> in the Duomo sure. in Turin. Now, I'm not really sure why that is, but it, it was an emotional experience to be near his body in Turin, but this was just went to a much bigger level, up or down, whichever way you want to imagine it. And I, I think it was because we were surrounded by the physical reality of the man here, Giorgio. We knew his body was in front of us in the Duomo in Turin, but we couldn't see it, but we knew it was there. But here, there was so much of him his hats, his razors, his rulers, his skis, his shoes, the, the, the bed that he slept in, the sheets that he slept in, you know, the wardrobe that he got his clothes out of. It was just like being in the... Being in the, the only thing that was missing was him being there talking to us. But he, he was there, of course, in spirit. So it just came to me, listening to everybody speak, how today was so different from Tuesday when we went to... The, to Pray at his body in the Duomo, and I think that's something we'll reflect upon and come to appreciate and understand a little more as the days go on, the weeks go on.